Grab your Bibles. Um, we're going to go to the Word of God this morning. I have a... Let me, I don't know how to describe this. I want to begin, begin a teaching that might take a couple of weeks to finalize or to finish. Um, but it's in Matthew chapter 4. I mean chapter 12. If you go to Matthew chapter 12... I just want to talk to you this morning to lay some foundation for some things that I believe that the Lord um, would have us to share. So if you don't mind, I'm going to preach from down here this morning because I want to be be next to y'all. Amen? Is that all right? I want to teach. I want to teach. I want to say, come on down. Come on down. Yeah. Our technical crew don't like it when I come down because they um, say, cameras doesn't pick me up too well. It's because I'm so light-skinned. Um, yeah. Well, some of y'all got that. Wow. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So they jokingly said, Dad, hold a flashlight like that. Yeah. Don't pay him no mind. It's all good. Y'all supposed to laugh. Come on, loosen up. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Matthew, Matthew chapter 12. Let me just talk this morning and allow God to have his way. It begins here by saying, um, verse 22, go to verse 22. And I'm going to be teaching from verse 22 all the way through 32. I won't get to 32 today, so we'll pick that up in the upcoming weeks. But I want to at least begin that process of explaining some of that to you. If you're there, say amen. Amen. It says here in verse 22, Then a demon oppressed, my translation says, some of your translation says possessed man. We'll talk about that. Who was blind and mute was brought to him, and he healed him. So that the man spoke and saw. My gosh, this is just messing me up. And all the people were amazed and said, can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, it is only by Beelzebul, the prince of the demons, that this man cast out demons. Knowing their thoughts, he said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. And no city or house divided against itself will stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom? And here's what he says. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, he says, it's a smite, isn't it? They will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his good unless he first binds the strong man? Then indeed he may plunder his house. Whoever is not with me, Jesus says, is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. Look at the next verse. Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven um, people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Scary passage, isn't it? Let's pray. Lord, you're wonderful. Lord, you're gracious. You're kind. You're merciful. You're all that, Lord. So as we engage Scripture this morning, begin the process of teaching us. Let us hear from you. Let us be more about you. We thank you for who you are and what you're doing, God. So... Speak through me, Felix dies. Felix moves out of the way that God, your will, will be done. Have your way in our midst. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen. Hey, let me, let me, let me say um, by way of introduction, Jesus had a way of not pulling punches. If Jesus were alive today, well, he is, but if he were present and walking among us, this issue of being politically correct and socially correct I wouldn't work for him. You can't get what I'm saying? Because here's what he'd do. He, he'd walk up to you and just say straight up, you got a demon. That's what he would do, right? He would just walk up to you and address the situation, address the circumstance, and he wouldn't give two cents about what your thought process was. Come on, y'all. Are you? He, he, he would just do that. Jesus would just do that. And, and there was a level of respect he gained about that because the text still says when you study Scripture that people followed him gladly right? I said that to say this, the church is wimping out, (laughs) right? We are, we're getting soft, we're getting soft, we're getting soft, 
and we're, 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 we're becoming too culturally sensitive and adjusting to the culture when we are the ecclesia, which means the called out people of God, that we're called out of this situation to have impact, to make a change, and to be something different. I, I'm one of a Bill Hybels fan, and Bill Hybel pastor Willow Creek Church, where he says that the church is the solution to the problems of the world today. I believe that with the depths of my heart. Let me tell you why I'm saying that. We are some powerful people. Okay, And when I say church, I'm not talking solely Restoration Christian Fellowship. I'm talking about the church universal. Anybody who has accepted Christ in their life as personal Lord and Savior are some powerful people, but we don't know it, and we don't walk in the boldness that God has given us. Come on, come on. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. And, and as we've been talking about reestablishing the kingdom of God, the whole premise of reestablishing the kingdom of God is so that we can get to this place. When we, when we first started this series, we said we have to learn how to rebel against the rebellion, right? In case you missed that, go back to the first two parts of this series. We talked about that extensively. Our job is to go out into the world and to pull people out and bring them into the kingdom of God. And this text here just kind of reminded me of who we are uh, who we're supposed to be following, what we're supposed to be doing, and what God would have us to do. So as I look at this text, I don't know how far I'm going to get, but I just, it, it, the text is still, it's still cooking in me, if I could use that term. And the more I study it, the more I see things in it, the more God is opening my eyes to it. But I want us to walk to the text and to see what God is doing. So what I want to do is I'm going to talk you through verses 1 all the way to verse, what is that, verse 25. Um, to give you some context of what's going on, and then we're going to flesh out verses 25 all the way to 30. Um, then we'll stop, see if we make it that far. Then I'll pick up the next two verses next Sunday because that's some deep theological stuff where we talk about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, and I don't want to confuse you. So I want to walk through this. Notice how, look at verse 22 and 23. Say amen if you're there. Now let me just talk through this to see if it makes sense to you. Then, but well, before we even get to then, verse chapter 12 opens up with him being Lord of the Sabbath, with him telling his disciples that they, you know, people were complaining because his disciples were hungry and they were eating the temple bread or the show bread. Then verse 9 picks up where he encounters this man with the withered hand. Verses 15 through 21 kind of ensues where he goes away from them um, to kind of get some rest, all that good stuff. Then verse 22 picks up, right? And it's as if, as if the, the Pharisees are trying to trap Jesus. It's as if they're trying to trap him. So now watch this. Verse 22 says, Then a demon-oppressed man who was blind and mute was brought to him, and he healed him so that the man saw and he spoke. Now I can't even get past that, right? Some of your translation says demon-possessed. And I prefer that translation because when I did my work on the Greek word for oppress, I still ended up with the word possess. So this man that they brought to Jesus, is very, very important that you hear me say this, he was possessed by a demonic spirit. Okay? Now, let me tell you what that meant. That the demons or the demonic spirit had complete influence, had complete control. He was, they were in the driving seat within this man himself, okay? And the text says that, that this man now was, was possessed such that the possession might have resulted in oppression. But hear this, everything behind the behavioral pattern that the text says about this man had nothing to do with physical ability to hear or physical ability to speak. Get the demon out, and all of a sudden, his ears would open and his mouth would be released. Let that rest for a while. So I need to talk to y'all. Because this is brewing in me. Watch the text. They brought to him, because this is the first time now in, 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 in the Gospels that you see a person that had a combination of illnesses. Deafness, he was what? And then he was also, no, he was blind, I'm sorry. Is that what it says? Yeah, and then what else he had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so let me go here real quick. I think part of the problem in society is they can't see clearly. <laughs> so they're saying the wrong things. We'll work this out, okay? 
and end, I'm pretty sure they had tried physician after physician after physician, then they realized that this was not a medical problem. Oh, I wish I had somebody. It was a spiritual condition that needed to be addressed. And whenever you're going to encounter anybody with a spiritual condition, you don't take them to a physician, you take them to the physician. Oh, come on, talk to me. You, you bring them to Jesus, right? So now, there's a several problems in the text, because watch into this. It says here, they brought the man to Jesus, and this is so short, it's so succinct, it's so tight, that the details that's implied in the text, the verbiage of the verse does it no justice, right? Because here's what it says. They brought him to Jesus, and he healed him so that the man spoke and saw, and the people were like, whoa! Right? Here's what you need to know about this. Exorcism was nothing new that was going on in that particular day and time. The problem with the exorcists of that day and time is that they worked, they did most of their stuff through incantations and through all this magical stuff. And there were some that, that were followers of God, but they won't just go up to the demon. They had to do, and I'm, I'm, some of this stuff, just, just, just visualize with me, right? This whole bunch of ritual and, and they would do this and they would do that and they'd light a fire and they'd go through, hum, 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 hum. come on, y'all. Look like some of our prayer meetings, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm going to leave that alone, yeah. And oh, no, 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 and they go through all that stuff, right? All that stuff. Oh, demon. Oh, you know, let me use somebody else before I get in trouble. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, she ain't got no demon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've been married too long. Amen. Yeah, I, I know how this works. <laughs> and they go through all that stuff, right? They go through all this incantation and all this stuff, and then, and then lock into this. And so now they bring the man to Jesus. And Jesus just goes and say, come out. <laughs> and then watch the crowd. Dang! That's what it says, verse 23. They were utterly amazed, right? Because they had never seen that before. All they had saw was all the chanting and the incantations and all the magical stuff. They saw the rituals. Listen to this. They saw the rituals, but they had never seen that kind of authority. Uh -huh. ah. Church, we got to stop ritualizing things and start exercising. Oh, uh, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to start exercising authority versus all the rituals. So Jesus just, Patrick, he just, he just comes up and says, come out. And, and the text didn't say the, demon, the man shrieved and shrieved. None of that's in the text. Not in this story. Because they're making a point. The demon left. Then all of a sudden, that blind man is seeing. And all of a sudden, he's what? That quick. That quick. Right? That was a problem for the church people. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this. That was a problem because they had seen rituals. They had never seen authority, right? The community was impressed because they had seen rituals, but they never seen authority function. That's a lot of our problem. We've seen rituals. We've never seen authority. Come on, y'all. Are you with me? Right? And, 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 and let me, I'm going to get ahead of myself, but, but this is weighing heavy on my heart. The church has a, the world has a presupposition of the church because they know the rituals of the church. They just don't know the, the authority that the church carries. Because we're ritualistic people. Right? And, 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 and so before all this stuff was going, all these rituals, all this stuff was happening. And then look at the text, look at the text. I tell you, I'm not going to get far. And listen to what they said. Can this be the son of David? This is the people talking. Can this be the son of David? Because listen to why they said that. If you read the entire Old Testament, the only somebody in the Old Testament who ever cast out a demon was who? David 
when that evil spirit from the Lord would come upon Saul, notice what Saul would do, play his harp. Y'all know the story. And, and so they said, man, the Messiah was going to be a descendant of David. So, man, last time we heard this happen this easy without all the ritualistic stuff was that David was just worship. I wish I had somebody in here. And in that worship service, those demons had to, whoo. Could this be David, right? Could this be David? And then watch this. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, no, nah, it ain't no David. It's only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this man cast out demons. It's a trip. Let me help you all with this real quick. Let me help you all with this. Because you got to understand the depth of what the Pharisees are accusing Jesus of, Right? And then we're going to walk through this. Here, Beelzebul, this word that's used here, um, could be translated um, the, the, the Lord of Flies. Uh, that's Beelzebub, could be a derivative of that word from the Greek. But the original language, it says, the text actually says Beelzebul, which means Lord of Hosts or the Lord of the Heights, meaning, and then notice what it says, he translated actually Prince of Demons. So in other words, they were saying, this is what they were, the people heard, right? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, no, that's not David, the son of David, that's Satan himself. That's what they were saying. Let me tell you why they said this. Let me tell you why they said it. Because go back into history. Y'all ain't never seen nobody have that kind of authority over demons. He's got to be the chief demon himself, and only the chief demon could walk into a person and tell somebody who's trying, get out. For him to have that kind of authority, all those demons must respond to him. <laughs> That's what they're saying, right? Right? And then notice what the next verse says. Jesus said... Then Jesus, knowing their hearts, he said to them, and then he starts. Let me read. Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and no city or house divided against itself will do what? Stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I, he says, cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast up? Oh, Lord Jesus, that's messed up. Therefore, he says, they will be your judges. But if by the Spirit of God I cast out demons, then, he says, the kingdom has come upon you. Let me keep going. How can a strong man enter a man's house and plunder his goods unless the man's, um, he first binds the strong man, then indeed he may plunder his house. And he says this interesting thing. Whoever is not with me is what? Against me. And whoever does not gather with me, does what? Scatters. Okay. So I want to take a time to look at Jesus' response. Five things he said, and we're going to talk about this, and then we'll pick this up um, next week. Just to kind of notice the first thing Jesus said. He says to them, a divided kingdom cannot stand. Come on, say a divided kingdom cannot stand. Divided say it again, a divided kingdom cannot stand. Kingdom cannot stand. Let, me, let, me, let me tell you what that is saying, and I'm trying not to get ahead of myself. Here's what that's saying. The problem with Rome, Rome's, Rome's, Rome was such an invincible country at the time of the text that they were not concerned about any outside force coming in and overthrowing the Roman government. Their concern was if a civil uprising or civil war were to start within the country, it could deteriorate the thing from the inside. And here's what Jesus is saying. When they said, you must be Beelzebul and have authority over the demons for you to come and just tell that demon to leave like that. Here's what Jesus is saying. Satan ain't that stupid. Explain that. Him telling me. He's trying to establish his kingdom in the world. And if he's trying to establish his kingdom in the world, do you think he's going to destroy his own kingdom? God, oh, I wish I had. In other words, in other words, here's what he's saying. Understand with me, the reason he's in the earth in the first place is because he was trying to overthrow God's kingdom in heaven. Come on. And he has led the rebellion 
And now he has a bunch of people following him on the earth where it says a third of the heavenly host was cast out with him. He's got demonic influences all over the place. Do you think he's that dumb that when he's gaining momentum, he's going to divide his kingdom amongst himself and be going around casting out demons? His goal is to have a demon in every human alive on the face of the earth. I want y'all to hear me say it like that. That's his goal. His goal is to have a demon in every human alive on the face of the earth. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again because I'm going somewhere with this. His goal is to have a demon alive in every person on the face of the earth such that he now has a unified kingdom where he's reigning over the earth. Right? And Jesus is saying this. Listen. A kingdom that's divided against itself will not stand. So I'm going to go here. Don't put me in that category. Okay, let's walk this out. Let's walk this out. Because then, then here's what he says to them. Secondly, as we kind of look at the text, he says followers are a direct reflection of their leaders. Now, understand with me, understand with me. Um, back in that day in biblical times, um, exorcisms were legitimate, they were genuine, there were some done by God, and there were some done by just pagan worshipers. You get the feel. And so here's what he's saying. The people then who were following you, are you saying that Satan is leading them? Right? It, it, it was a pun or his way of saying, I guess you must be following Satan then. Because if I'm casting out demons, then who do you think your people are doing it by? It's a rhetorical thing, right? We, I want to flesh that out some more next week, but I just want to put that out there so we can get to where we need to go, right? And then he makes this interesting statement. He, he makes this interesting statement. The presence of the Spirit is proof positive that God's kingdom is here. Look at the text, because I want to I work here a little while. I'm going to show you a couple of things. Notice what it says here. Verse 26 is that? And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided him against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And look at what he said. If I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. I'll pick that up next week. But no, watch this. But now, if by the Spirit of God I cast out demons, then the kingdom has come where? Upon you. Okay, so here's what he's saying. Let me take my time with this. Because this is starting to get to the crux of the thing. I mean, just be English. Patrick, deep, forgive me, okay? No, no but problem. you're going to be my demon possessed All right. today. All right? I don't have to go home with you. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How long this man had that demon, right? How long has this demon been plaguing him? You kind of get what I'm saying. Amen, amen. How long have you all attempted to get the demon out? And you couldn't. Amen. Okay? How long has this been going on? And he ain't the only somebody that's demon-possessed. Y'all know about the one that's been cutting himself and pulling himself in the fire. Come on, come on. And, and you know of all the biblical references of demon-possessed people, right? And back up with me to Luke chapter 4, verse 16, and here's what he says. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to what? To the poor to open blinded eyes and to set at liberty those who are oppressed or oppressed, right? And then he handed them back the scroll, and here's what he said to them. Today is the scripture fulfilled in your midst. So here's what he's trying to say. Listen, this guy had this demon in him so long, and since Satan will not cast out Satan, and all of a sudden I show up and I just speak a word, and the demon has left him by the mere sound of the words that came out of my mind, mouth. That is indicative of the truth that the kingdom of God, hear this now, is present in your midst. And here's what that means. God now has sent me to rebel against the rebellion. And my mission in earth is to go to every demon-possessed person on the face of the earth and get the demons out of them. So watch out because the kingdom now has now taking place. It's setting rain, and God's goal is to set captive street. Now, church, the reason that is so paramount to me is because if, if, if I have the Spirit of God in me, uh, 
and you have the Spirit of God in you. And the church of God is filled with spirit-filled people who have the presence of God in them. And our mission is to reestablish the kingdom of God in the earth. Why are there so many demon-possessed people in our families, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, on our streets, in our jobs? What are we doing? Process with me. What are we doing? If the kingdom is here. If the kingdom is here, right? If, if the kingdom. Because notice the conditional clause. He says, if, if. Watch it carefully. Watch it carefully. And then, then I'm going to hit this and I'm sorry. He says, watch this. Watch this carefully. He said, if. Uh, where is it at? But if by the Spirit of God, verse 28, that I cast out demon. Look at the then clause. Then the kingdom has come upon what? You. By virtue of the fact, Pharisees, that this man, a couple of seconds ago, could not see, and he could not speak. Now he could see, and he could speak, is indicative of the truth that the kingdom of God is here. Amen. 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 So, if the world is not seeing, and the world is not hearing, don't blame the world. Unless we just have in ritualistic stuff. If we're walking in authority, I wish I had somebody. Right? If we're walking in authority, we ought to have impact and things ought to be different. Is this making sense? You guys are with me. Right? And then he goes on, he goes on, he goes on. And he says this weird statement, and I'm going to let this rest. He says, Satan now is defeated as a result of the power of the kingdom's presence. Remember one time, remember one time, he was going somewhere, and then the demon-possessed people saw him. And remember they said this, hey, Jesus, son of David, did you come to cast me out? Leave us alone. I know you can't help yourself, and you're going to cast us out anywhere. So I tell you what, to help people stop eating pork, just put us in the pigs. <laughs> I'm joking, y'all. <laughs> y'all know, y'all get it, right? He said, just send us, just send us to the swine, just send us to the swine, right? Y'all know the story. So watch this, watch this text. Watch this, because this is important to me, and man, I want to work with this real quick, because there's a formula here. Verse 28, but if the Spirit of God, by the Spirit of God, I cast out demons... The kingdom has come upon you. Now watch verse 29. Or how can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his good unless he does what? No, no, there's a, there's a word before that. Mine says, yeah, don't miss that, don't miss that, don't miss that. Yeah, don't miss that, don't miss that. Unless he first binds the strong man, secondly, then he can plunder his house. This is rough, guys. This is rough. This is rough. Let me stay back here so y'all don't throw stuff at me. Um, this is rough. Here's what this is saying. How can a man, it says here, enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, then he can plunder his house? Let me back it again. It's going to hit somebody. How can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, then he can plunder his house? Here's what Jesus is saying. How do you think I was able to do that? The only reason I'm able to do that is because the guy who had control has already been defeated. And because he's, able, he's already been defeated, I can take anything that belongs to him because I've got free reign. That's heavy stuff, right? That's heavy stuff. So watch this, watch this, watch this. The first thing I do is when I enter the earth realm, and I'll pick this up next week because this is that, like, that's why I can't do both verses together. I first show up, I defeat Satan, 
And because Satan is defeated, he's not a concern of mine. There's nothing he can do to me because he's already defeated, right? So since I've defeated him and he inhabits this guy, I just tell him, get out, and then the house is mine. I'm oversimplifying this, but it's good stuff. And since the house is mine, any house that belongs to me sees. <laughs> any house that belongs to me and it hears and speaks. You kind of get what I'm saying? You get, you get where I'm going. So this is where I want to land, and this is what's going to offend you. Okay, this is what's going to offend you. I'm just going to give you a heads up. I'm just going to give you a heads up because it's a very offensive statement. If you've got folk that's not hearing and speaking and they say Jesus inhabits the house, I'm using metaphors, mm -hmm. stop lying. Mm -hmm. Stop lying. I know that it's going to be offensive, but I want you all to come back. All right, we can clean it up. <laughs> stop lying. Because if he's not in control... And you're still doing, listen to this, satanic stuff. Don't tell people God inhabits the house. Y'all all right? You guys still love me? That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. But it's truth. It's truth, right? Let me, let me give you a practical example. If I have an addiction to a substance, be it pornography, be it whatever the situation is, and the, the demons has me where I, Satan just speaks and I act out, and I let Christ come in, understands what come in means. He first binds the strong man, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And then he can take over. Here's what does not happen. Jesus does not say to Satan, hey, you want to share this room? He don't do that. He doesn't say, hey, why don't you move over? I'll tell you why. If you stay in your half of the house, I'll stay in my half of the house. Mm. He doesn't do that. Y'all know this, right? Okay, I'll tell you why. i tell you why. Satan, you have the head and I'll take the feet. No, no, no. <laughs> he doesn't do that, right? He goes in, he binds the strong man, and then here's what he does. He goes into every single room and he says this, clear. Clear. All clear. Clear. All clear. Then at some point on the journey, he says, all clear. Yeah. I got it all. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, we start hearing and we start speaking. And y'all not hearing me this morning. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. This is a very, very important principle. Very, very important principle, right? Because the thing says here, Satan's already defeated as a result of the power of God's kingdom. So here's what that means. If Satan's already defeated and I grant him access to my life, it's not that I can't help myself. It's because I like what he's doing with me. Here's how he says it in one parable. When a person goes in and they cast the demon out of the house, the demon leaves. But listen to this. But if the house stays unoccupied, he goes and he finds seven more greater than him and they come in and they set up camp. Y'all gonna appreciate this, right? This is the problem with the Pharisaic um, exorcism process. This is what they said. They would cast demons out, but they didn't have nothing to put in the house after they cast the demon out. So y'all remember one guy, he ran up to this guy and he showed up at the dude and he said, dang dude, how many times they done did exorcism on you? What's your name? And he said, Legion. Dang, how many of them in there? Right? But still with authority, get out. And all thousand, millions, however, however many demons were there, left by the sound. This is the authority that we have as kingdom subjects. I want you all to hear me say that. So, so lock into this. If, if, if Minister Annie has a demon and she comes for help and we say, I know, I know you ain't got no demon, baby. I know. She says, no, nah, Pastor, get somebody else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, 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 and we say, demon, leave. And that demon tells us, Paul, I know. <laughs> and, 
and that demon stays, okay? It has nothing to do with the power of God, and it has everything to do with the person liking the demon. I wish I had somebody in here. Look at the last thing, and then um, in God's kingdom, there is no neutral ground. And I'm done, right? And we're just going to pray. This, 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 we're just going to pray. Watch what he says here. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me does what? Scatters. So here's what he's saying. There's no middle ground, people. There's not like you can be partially saved <laughs> or partially delivered or partially whatever. If I release a word of authority, that demon has to go. Right? So my daughter who proofs my sermons for me, she said, Dad, use this and said, live in, live in God's kingdom and take Satan down. I got to give Veronica credit for that. I had this huge theological statement. She says, simplify it, old man. <laughs> Tell the people, live in God's kingdom and watch Satan's kingdom come down. That's it. And what we do as a body, we help each other live there. Right? We help each other live there. We help each other walk this out. We help each other walk in the authority. Here's what I shared to our team this morning when we're praying. I said, man, this church ought to be able to go to every neighborhood and tell Satan he's got to go because we're here. <laughs> come on. Yeah, come on. Because we're here. Right? We're here. We're here. Now, this is the hit. This is the hit. But if we like our um, what's the word I used earlier? The rituals of Sunday morning and never walk in authority Monday through Friday? The neighborhood's going to look the same. Your workplace going to look the same. There's power in the kingdom of God. And my prayer for us as a church is we start to get to the place where we walk in the kingdom of God. Two applications and I'm done. Pastor Tani, come. The right now God's kingdom empowers the church to demolish demonic strongholds. So that means we can go anywhere, 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 okay? Here's what my friend said to me. This is the political side of me that's not political. Um, we ended up with, with two bad candidates running for governor of Colorado, right? Um, and then all of a sudden the church wants to come together, wants the candidate's name hit the ballot and try to get the lesser of two evils, Right? This is, this, this is what was going on. And here's what I said to them. We were too late. We were too late. We're too late. We should have shaped culture a long time ago. We're too late. We're too late. Okay? And we're, we're working from the rear as opposed to from the front. We're too late. You can't get what I'm saying? We're too late. Okay? If a marijuana shop show up in this shopping center, we're too late. Y'all not hearing me. Yeah. You kind of get what I'm saying. We're too late. We've got to work out front. And since we have authority, we need to learn to walk in our authority to shape culture. That's number one, okay? So we're going to talk about it. Here's the second application I want to take away from there. God's kingdom subjects are empowered with the ability to overcome any difficulty they encounter in life. Here's what that says to me. I don't know about none of y'all. Here's what that says to me. Felix, you have the power and the ability within you to rid yourself as a child of God of any influence the enemy may try to place over your life. I can take the thought captive, submit it to the things of God. I can say no. Here's what he says in Peter. I can resist the devil, and guess what? He, w yeah, you get it. You get it. You get it. You kind of get what I'm saying. So here's what I should not be saying. Y'all pray for me. The devil's on my back. Is he defeated or is he not defeated? Maybe I'm chasing me and not the devil. This is why I don't want to talk about the last part of the scripture yet because that last part's going to really mess you up and you want to hear it, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Here, this is a hint. Here's what those, those guys were saying to Jesus. Hey, Jesus, is Satan doing that through you? And I, I wrestle with that because I see a lot of believers doing the same thing the Pharisees did. It's the devil doing that. Is God's kingdom here or not? 
Do we have power or not? Sometimes it's as simple as this. Just stop it. <laughs> Sometimes it's that simple, Elder Matthews. Just stop it. Just stop it. Stop it. Right? Bow your heads. With you. Lord, you're sharing something with us, God. And it's hard, it's a heavy word. I'm praying that we hear you. We walk in power, we walk in authority. We walk in the fullness of who we are, God. Forgive us, forgive us, forgive us. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, forgive us for not knowing. Forgive us, God. But now that we're coming to a realization of what your word says, we're challenged to be different. We're challenged to live differently. Forgive us, God. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me as a leader for not teaching sooner, God. We love you, God. That's not our heart, is not to let Satan reign. We want to do what Maya was talking about, God. We want to go out and impact community, God. We want to go out, God, to the homeless place. We want to go to our neighborhood, God, to that wife that's being beaten by her husband, God, to that child that's just being neglected. We want to go out, God, and just tell Satan where he can go. His kingdom must come down. We want to rebel against the rebellion. Forgive us, God. Forgive us. But then thank you for the power. <laughs> thank you for the power that we have. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the power. Take a moment for you in your own way. You pray. Take a moment. And then Pastor Tani is going to share with us.